Check. Check. What's going on? I have been um, putting this video off um, for a week. I just spent an hour trying to get um, the team GoPro, um, the GoPro that the team uh, pitched in money and uh, bought me and then brought to me at the spoken word team gathering of October 2nd. I was trying to hook it up to get it to work as the camera for this. Does that look fucking better? I don't fucking know. Um, I spent an hour trying to do it. I couldn't do it. I have to go with the camera um, that's in that's in the, the computer. It, it's, it looks shitty, um, but I couldn't get the Team GoPro to work. I appreciate the gesture, but I just couldn't get it to work. I'll figure it out. The reason I spent so much time trying to get that camera fucking working, the better camera, is because I want in the, in the re, uh, I, I want this to look good. And the reason I took I put put this off over a week is because I want to get it right. And the reason I'm jumping on now, even though nothing's ready, is because today was Jack Shattuck's wake. And I'm not going to let the day pass without getting on here. And trying to say some things about him. I've been putting it off because what he meant to me. And what I want to try to convey in this video. Uh, means a great deal to me. And I don't want to fuck it up. And I honestly think this particular video. Is probably beyond my capabilities. To get right the topic. The things that uh, have been flying through my mind. Everything that I want to try to say. I don't think I'm up to it. I th and, and I you know. This, I'm, I'm not doing any fucking uh, intro. Um, I'm not going to edit this. Um, I'm, I'm not going to put any, you know, of the graphics and shit like that. This is just going up straight, okay? Uh, I'm not trying to get cutesy with it. Not that I ever really edit any of my footage. I, I hardly ever edit any of my footage. Uh, but I add, you know, I, I'll occasionally bleep something. But the actual content, I just sort of let rip. Whatever comes out, comes out. And I'll tell you right now, I don't know what the fuck's going to come out of my mouth right now because I've barely sorted any of this. And there's so much that I want to say. Let, let's see if I can do it. But I, I hardly ever edit anything. I just bleep them and put little graphics on. I'm not doing that. This isn't, I'm not trying, this isn't trying to be cute. Even though this is a Nodcast. This is a formal Nodcast. Whatever the fuck a formal Nodcast is, I don't even fucking know. I'm not trying to be glib. I just don't. But the reason this is a Nodcast, even without the little cute little stingers at the beginning and the intros and the and the graphics and the skulls and the fucking smiles and shit like that, smiley faces and logos and shit. Um, even without that, the reason this isn't, I'm, I'm calling it a fucking, a Nodcast, I'm calling it maybe the most important one I've ever done is because more than anything, Jack wanted to come on this thing and tell his story, and tell his story. There is so much. So many of out, so many of you out there. This isn't an accusation. I wouldn't. Well, I, I, I did know uh, to an extent. I, I did know to an extent prior to meeting Jack what somebody in, in in a state in a condition like Jack goes through on a daily basis. I'm going to try to convey that if I can. I don't know if I'll be able to get all of this into a single video. I honestly don't. Like I said, I really don't know what's going to come flying out of my mouth. But Jack wanted to come on here. He wanted more than anything. Talked about it all the time. He wanted to come on here. And tell his story and share it with you all. And I'm going to explain why that didn't happen. But that's going to be one of my biggest topics. Uh, uh, to or one, it's not a topic. This I, I didn't plan this out. One of the things that's been on my mind is is regret. Is regret. And um, we'll get to that. Uh, that's something we'll talk about. But this is in Jack's name. Today was his wake. And Jack, this is for you. Um, it's basically and and. I, I, I don't I, I don't want to lose the thread of this except there's no real thread to chase except to try to say what I want to say about Jack. Uh, I met a lot of his family today, okay? There's, there's basically like three groups of people who I've corresponded with this week that I want to touch on that lead me to what's been on my mind. And uh, I met a bunch of Jack's family today, people I had never met before. All of them knew who I was. Before I even stuck my hand out. They were all like, Rob, thank you for what you did for Jack. And uh, 
I don't know what to say about that. That blew my fucking mind. I mean, truly blew my fucking mind. I was wearing a mask, for God's sakes. They, from here up, they knew who I was. So I don't even know what to say about that. And all of them said, thank you for what you did for Jack. And another one that was repeated to me was, Jack, this was a few different people said, Jack said nobody understood him better than you, meaning me, my fat ass. I hope, perhaps, that someone from Jack's family will see this video because I want them to know what he meant to me and what he gave me. Because whatever I gave him or whatever he perceived that I gave him, I got a lot more than I gave. That is a fact. And I hope I can put into words what that was. I'm going to try to do, I, ha I have to try to do this in little bits because otherwise I'm just going to be flying all over the place. I'm already flying all over the place. Fuck it. I, this is the only way I can do it. But I, I hope that some of them see this because I'd like to tell them I didn't get a chance today. Wasn't the right form for it. What Jack gave to me. Uh, and I will get to that in a second. The other group of people in this leads me uh perhaps to what you know what jack did for me um the other group of people that i wanted to address that addressed me this week were the people on social media and such and reached out to me in email text gave me phone calls about jack's death particularly um uh, the i i put up a, 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 a tribute up to jack or it was well people called it a tribute it wasn't it was just my feelings on him uh, the, the day he passed. And um, people calling it a tribute, like I said, I, I didn't think of it as such. It was just the truth. But uh, people were saying to me, Rob, sorry for your loss. Okay? I appreciate that. I appreciate that greatly. That is, at times like that, ha having people, both strangers, friends, and even associates, pop up and tell you that is a beautiful thing but i didn't obviously I w i've wanted to say because i got a lot of them sorry for your loss rob guys it's not my loss okay it was ne it, it was never my loss it was jack's family's loss and more importantly it was this whole thing was jack's loss that's what matters will i miss jack of course, I already miss him. But what he gave me, nobody can ever take away. Uh, what he gave me, I will never lose. But the real loss was Jack himself. And this comes to the core of it for me. I, I had said in the post that not a week goes by, and sometimes, you know, a lot more, uh, not a week goes by where I don't, hear of the passing of someone from my past sometimes a lot more than once you know i think i think the record is like five in one fucking week but at least once a week i will hear of somebody that i know to, to some extent or another from my past passing away now for years that was mostly because of self-destructive behaviors suicide violence you know acting out or or drugs and alcohol or a combination of all of the three and as I had said in the post, uh, though that doesn't make the grief, grief or loss any less, when people, when I get word of somebody passing from those kinds of things, because their choices are, are, are because their behaviors, the, are because the results of their behaviors could often be predicted to some extent or another somebody is acting in an unhinged manner drugs or alcohol or you know even suicide in some cases in some cases it's at least predictable even if only in hindsight somebody you know shoots dope and they overdose does it you know does it make the loss any less tragic or the grief any less no not even a little but 
Is it easier to, to process? Yeah, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. It fucking happens. Uh, the fact that I'm sitting here doing this fucking video, uh, man, I, I, I have dodged a million stupid prizes because I played stupid games for fucking years. But, oh, you know, a, a, a quick side note, as I'm getting older, the losses are no longer just for stupidity, from stupidity. They're now, people are now passing from just life itself. People are, life's taken them. It's no longer, you know, a function of self-destructive choices. But Jack's loss and Jack's life and Jack's experiences, they don't have that in common. That they, they, I, I am not finding it easy to process. In fact, Jack, and, and, and here we get to the, the, for me, the core of it. Jack, in one person, for me, was an example of all the worst aspects of this existence and some of the best. Jack, through no fault of his own, um, at the age of 15, and I'm not going to try to tell his story blow by blow here. Um, I want to do that a little more justice, but he essentially woke up one day and lost the ability to move from his ears down for the rest of his life, which just ended. And uh, he suffered just on a daily basis. That man suffered more than anybody else I've ever known both physically and emotionally. He suffered that way for 16 years without respite and without hope of respite. He had no illusions it was going to get any better. Was there a million and one shots, some kind of stem cell research or some kind of treatment might come through? Yeah, he talked about it from time to time, but it was unlikely to happen in his lifetime if it ever happens at all. And, uh, He lived that way, arbitrarily, and then it ultimately took his life. Now, it turns out there's some details that are emerging that perhaps it was not, I, I, I'll put it this way, I had been, uh, from my prior experiences I with people with those kinds of injuries, and our conditions, the long-term prognos prognosis isn't good. Jack was, and, and, and you know, this is a separate topic because I want people to understand what he went through, but he was sick on a daily basis. It is not just that you're robbed of your body, the use of your body. He felt as much panic on a daily basis as you or I would if we woke up one day and couldn't do anything. He felt like he was suffocating all the time. Sometimes he was suffocating. His lungs filled up with fluid. He can't move. He can't use his diaphragm the way we do. He had infections all the time. He was on antibiotics all the time. These caused spasms. He couldn't feel his body for pleasure, but he damn well could feel pain. Even Joseph's son, the Nazarene, the carpenter's son, suffered three hours on the cross. My mother said this, actually, when we were talking about Jack. Uh, because I was, well, I'll get to that in a second, uh, why we were talking about Jack. But, it comes down to what he gave me. Uh, we were talking about the level of suffering I was explaining to her. Because I, I was privy to Jack's daily experience as much as anybody can be. And uh, she said, oh my God, even my mother's devoutly religious. She said, even Jesus only had to do three hours on the cross. Jack had to do 16 years. Now, to be real, you know, uh, to be fair, Jesus, it was the, the last week of his life was suffering. Um, but Jack, yeah, 16 years, no respite, no hope of respite. And then it finally take, takes him from us. Um, uh, though, like I said, we're finding out some details that perhaps there was some negligence involved. I'm not going to speak any further about that, but I will damn well keep you appraised because if there was, there's some people looking to see something done about it and, uh, it will help in any way that I can. But, uh, uh. Hold on. 
I had been watching when I saw Jack after the COVID pause, the 2020 pause, I was stunned uh, by how wasted he looked. I, I felt like I was alarmed. Um, I felt that he was on a downward trajectory. Uh, he, he didn't, he had lost weight. He didn't, he didn't look as well. And this leads me to one of my biggest regrets. Um, How do I put this into words? Uh, I don't want to pause this because I want to just rip this video up. and I just want to put it up. I don't want to get into fucking sync, syncing video together and shit. One of my biggest regrets is that I didn't do that Nodcast with Jack. But there were reasons for it. And this is another, and it leads to another regret with Jack. Especially towards the end as he got weaker. I'm deaf. Okay? I am like road deaf. I spent... 25 years in a fucking heavy metal band. Three heavy metal bands. We'll get to that in a second because music comes into this a little bit. Um, and one of the reasons I would often um, try to interact with Jack in ways other than the phone because he preferred the phone because it was easier on him. Um, he did have voice software last couple of years, but for a long time, he'd have to like, uh, pulse out texts and stuff like that. So he, he would prefer to talk. I couldn't hear him a lot of the time. And man, we're going to get into the, the regrets, I guess the, 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 the really deep regrets. Um, I had difficulty hearing him under the best of circumstances, under the best of circumstances. And it gave me a great deal of anxiety because Jack was somebody I, I did not want to humor him. I did not want to just sort of, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it, You know, it, it, I wanted to hear what he had to say. Um, we used to talk for hours on the phone, it, 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 especially when we first met. And it was, it was easier then. Um, it, it got worse as time went on. And um, one of the reasons I didn't do... Uh, the Nodcast with him is because I had done, I don't have, I don't do guests very often, as you guys know. In fact, it's pretty rare. Uh, one of the reasons for that, there's a bunch of reasons for that. Uh, part of it is like, you know, most of the guests that I have access to are the people that, um, you know, you guys, the, the viewers have expressed interest in, interested in, have something to do with hardcore punk rock. And I, I don't care to Nothing they got to say that I want to hear. I mean, maybe you guys would, but I'm not an interviewer. Um, I roll over people and come. No, I'm just kidding. Sometimes. I'm, I listen when it's time to listen. I talk when it's time to talk. This is my show, so I fucking talk. Or whatever it is. It's not even a show. It's me on a fucking video. Fuck. I had some friends on. Colin of Arabia and one of my buddies, Jimmy, a long time ago. We did like two hours of fucking awesome video. I was fucking psyched with it. I was like, man, that was great. This is going to be a new thing. We're going to do this. We're gonna, I'm going to have random people on. Uh, I couldn't hear either of them on the video. Colin worse than Jimmy, which was crazy. That like dumbfounded me because Colin on stage and, 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 and often in public is as loud as, 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 you know, or not as loud as boisterous as I am on stage. And he was very, you know, uh, reflective and thoughtful in the interview and he wasn't talking with a lot of volume. What I didn't realize at that point, at that point, Jesus, this is, I'm going, I don't want to go down a fucking rabbit hole. I want to keep this about Jack. I, at the time, and until very recently, I didn't use an audio rig. I would just turn a fucking cheap $40 Geek Pro camera on and just yell into the thing. I didn't realize just how stri uncommonly strident my fucking voice is, okay? And uh, I didn't realize how anybody else using those cameras, you couldn't fucking hear them. I lost, I lost like two and a half hours of footage. I was like, I'm never going through that again. So what I kept telling Jack is, Jack, I got to get the audio right because I knew we would never hear him like and especially towards the end i i knew that it and i don't have any experience with audio i just got this mic like last year just for me i don't even know what good it does i'm probably still being picked up by the internal mic whatever i didn't have the gear i didn't have the facility i was not going to make the guy pour his heart out and then find out that the, it was you know uh, unusable um uh, but I still have regret because I would have run at it. I would have run at it a lot harder 
and a lot faster. That's the regret, you, you know, when you are cavalier with somebody else's time or time in general. I wasted time, now time's wasted me. That's where I'm at with music. Um, but the, 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 the deeper regret is particularly after his, his last accident that put him in the hospital. Uh, Jack was so weak and in so much pain I could I could barely understand him at all like I to be honest I really couldn't at all and uh, he wanted to be on the phone with me and I did it I, of course the first couple of nights I talked to him both nights he was really bad he was honestly barely aware that I was there. He was in acute pain. And uh, it gave me a great deal of anxiety because it, it, it had always been, it had always given me a lot of anxiety to, to, to talk to him in those circumstances. At least when we were close personally, like together, I could like lean down and we could get close. I could hear him. At a show, it was hard, but we'd go outside or whatever. But on the phone or, or even the FaceTime, I couldn't hear him. And I'm getting to something. It, it would give me a great deal of anxiety. I'd sweat. I'd break out in a sweat because I wanted to hear him. And I couldn't. And I don't want to humor him. He wasn't somebody that I just want to be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. You can do that to somebody because Jack didn't just blab either. He would, sp he, he, he would, sp we would be, he would speak. He had something to say and I wanted to hear it. And it really disturbed me. And I, that I felt like and the fact that it was causing me distress and anxiety made me feel like I was betraying him because there were some times that I would avoid it. Shit. Uh, and I spoke to a really good friend of ours. Uh, last time I saw Jack, he was there, my friend Chris. And Chris knew him as, as well as I did. Chris introduced me to Jack. And um, i got to watch the time. I don't want this thing to get too fucking big. I, I said, it, you know, and, and, and the other, man, I'm cobbling this together. So I said, it, you know, it, 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 I don't want to, I don't want, to, I don't know what to do. Like, I, I, I can't hear him. And, and Chris just said, bro, just, just just be there for him. Let him say what he has to say. If you miss a little bit of it, hey, he just doesn't want to be alone. Okay. He just doesn't want to be alone. If you miss something, there's nothing either you can do about it. Because that was the thing. With anybody else, you'd say, speak up. But this is you know, I can't hear you fix the phone. He, well, he can't do that. And the whole reason he had trouble being audible to somebody as deaf as I am is he, he doesn't have the strength in his diaphragm. So you don't want to belabor it. Like, uh, you know, sometimes when it was just not, I would say, bro, I can't hear you. Like, uh, let's try this way. And we would try different ways to talk. And just, I, I, I felt better after that. I was like, I, oh, I can do that in a second. Like I would, uh, you know, I did miss some of it. And, um, um, I just, uh, there was another aspect to what, that, uh, so I, I had regret over that. I felt better about that. Um, we stayed in touch right up to the end, um, uh, Jack and I, and I, I think I, I had said in the, um, I, I feel like I'm leaving that last thing, like I'm leaving it on, like I'm leaving a string on fucking, like I'm not wrapping it up. Um. Well, to summate, that's why I never got a chance to have him on the video because I wanted to do it too because more than anybody, I wanted to people to understand what he was going through because in that way, maybe I could impart to someone else the gift that he gave me. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm shooting all over the place, but um, as I had said a bit earlier, what Jack went through, the arbitrary cruelty of it, the chaos of it, the fact that this just happened to a kid who didn't do nothing to deserve it. It wasn't like, you know, he hurt himself or what, it was his own immune system attacked his spinal cord and left him in that state and left him in that state for 16 years up until a week ago. There's, there's no reconciling that, okay? And it represents the worst of the human condition to me. It reminds me of all the ugliness that's right there that we try to put out of our sight and mind, but it's right there. The, the, the 
the the horror that can swallow any of us at any given time. There's no justice to what happened to Jack. Uh, this the the, the 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 arbitrary cruelty of it. The I mean, we used to talk about it. I I, I said, bro, you must feel like the universe licked its finger, reached out, and fucking touched you on the fucking forehead, picked you out of everybody. And he said, yeah, yeah. Uh, fucking shit he went through on a fucking daily basis. That's why when his family said, uh, he always said nobody understood him better than me, meaning better than you, meaning me. That fuck, And Jack used to tell me that too. He must have been talking about his mindset because I used to tell him on a daily basis, and this reminds me of the final thing that my friend Chris helped me with. I used to tell Jack to his face constantly on a day, every, almost every time we talk, bro, I literally can't even fathom what you are going through on a daily basis. And I, <laughs> I, I, I have some experience with anguish. I said, I truly can't even imagine it. And that led me to the hottest thing towards the, the end. And sometimes prior, but definitely at the end, because Jack was getting despondent towards the end. He rebounded right before he passed, last couple of weeks before he passed. But he was telling me those two nights that we were on the phone for a really long time when he was in the hospital, when I could barely hear him, and when he was like trailing off and I was losing him, not from opiates or anything, but be from the pain. He was telling me, and, and, and in the messages we traded in between, because we were always going back and forth. Like we, we, we'd talk every couple of days, sometimes every couple of weeks. It depended on where I was at, where he was at. But we communicated chats, texts, emails multiple times a day, right up to the end, except the day before. Now, that's going to lead me to one of my other regrets. But um, I would tell him, I have no understanding of what you're going through. I can't even fathom it. And that would leave me feeling really powerless, especially towards the end, because he was getting despondent. And he reached the point, and I'm glad he respond, rebounded from this before he finally passed. At least he got some reprieve from this. He was saying, I can't take this anymore. It's not worth it to me. That's going to lead me to another regret. I'm going to write that down. Uh, oh, part of the... Uh, What the fuck do you say to somebody in his state? I didn't know what to say. And that, towards the end, was causing me stress. And that made me feel like a worm because what's my stress? Or distress, I should say, because it wasn't stress like like I was like irritable. It was distress like I don't know what to tell him. Because there's nothing anybody could tell me if I was in his state. I couldn't hear anything from anybody else. I wouldn't want to. I would reject it. And, uh... I've rejected more for less uh, than what he went through. And that was when Chris said, there's nothing you can say. Just be there for him. And that that relieved me of it completely. I was like, be there for Jack? Yeah, I can fucking do that. But he was one of the few people in this thing that we got. I can usually meet just about anybody on some common ground, whatever they're whatever adversity they face. And I can, I have some common experience with Jack. I had no common experience. Only what he told me, I couldn't fathom, fathom what he went through on a daily basis. And that's another thing I'd like to do in memory of him. I would like to do something, whether with these videos or something to try to illustrate to those that don't know what somebody in a condition like that goes through on a daily basis, because it's not just the hell of the fact that they cannot use their bodies. There are a million further sufferings and indignities and intrusions and sources of anguish and um i would like i would uh, maybe i can do something uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking about things like that and with with thinking of some other memorials and and this is just the night of his uh, there are other things that this ain't going to be the last video about jack i'll tell you that but um he, as I said, it gave me, I felt like there was nothing I could say to him. And especially at the, towards the end when he was feeling despair. Um, I mean, what, what do you say to somebody who's contending with something like that? Oh, don't worry. It'll be better tomorrow. 
They could be better tomorrow. Hey, just hold out. It's a dark time. You know, the rain goes away. Silver lining, fucking blue skies and shit. Fuck them away. I would spit in somebody's face if they gave me that shit. Jack never spit in anybody's face. But perhaps what he meant when he said nobody understands better is his outlook. And I know he could open up to me. Um, I don't know why he chose to. I'm glad he did. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying he. You know, he, he. I know he did open up to me. He would tell me things I know he didn't tell other people, and he felt all the anger and persecution that I would, and then some. And I think maybe if that's maybe what he meant. I, I, I would listen. That's. I knew there was nothing I could tell him. I knew there was no platitude or slogan or glib. You know. And since I didn't share common experience with him in, 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 as far as what he was dealing with acutely, I would just listen and I would ask him questions. And I, of course, was never daunted by his condition himself. Like that never bothered me or not in talking about it. It's only, you know, when I felt compelled to like, should I, I want to say something to make him feel better and, and realize there wasn't anything I could think of to say that made that I regret that as well. But, um, to get to what Jack, the gift that Jack gave me, I, I want to bring around the third group of people who I was in touch with this week. Um, a bunch of people. I I did this. I did the This Is Hardcore podcast the very night Jack died. I was doing that podcast the night that Jack died. I may have been doing it as he actually passed. If not, I was doing it after he had passed, I, a couple of hours after he passed. I didn't even know this, okay? I didn't know this. A lot of people hit me up this week to say, hey, just heard the This Is Hardcore podcast. Great job. Wicked awesome. Fucking very interesting, very entertaining. I had fun doing the podcast with Joe. Um, and Joe does a great job. He asks great questions, shit like that. But I found... I couldn't, first of all, I couldn't believe that anybody got anything out of that because I detest talking about that sort of like band history shit. Like I loathe it. I know it's a hardcore podcast. So of course, I, I'm, you know, I knew what I was getting into. I'm not saying, oh, Jesus, I wish he hasn't. Not like that. It's just that you, anybody that watches these videos knows that unless the video is titled, hey, a couple of blood for blood war stories or whatever, I don't ever fucking talk about music. Um, Particularly like that history stuff. I'm I'm leery of it right off the rip because anytime you talk about that stuff, it I'll I'll either go two ways if I if I go too dark on it, like and try to point out, nah, this wasn't as fun as it sounded. It sounds like you're being a fucking bitch and whining and shit like that. And if you get all yeah, and then we did this, and then we did. It sounds like self congratulatory. It's like a tightrope of like making an ass out of yourself. There's like no real way to do it. But I never talk about that stuff. I was stunned people got something out of it. Uh, that kind of like, you know, behind the music band history shit. Oh, it just fucking boys the tits out of me. And it's not a part of my life I like to examine. I, But that leads me to the point in, in another regret. I didn't find out till the next day that Jack had passed. A lot of that after, you know, a lot of the content or shit that I was talking on the This Is Hardcore podcast was me talking about how defeated I was with music and how, you know, how heartbreaking I found doing music and especially recently in the last couple of years and, you know, how much it's taken out of me and shit like that to find out that, you know, I'm sitting there basically on music on, on, not, not on music, um, you know, while Jack's passing, I'm bitching about, how, you know, how, how fucking burnt out I am on music and how fucking, um, uh, you know, frustrated and, 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 and how, you know, much it takes out of me. Like, look, I'm, it made me feel like a complete puling, whining twat to find out Jack passed the next day. We'll get to that in a second. I'm just going to say on a side note about the music thing, you know, I, I didn't prepare anything to say on that part. I just went where the questions went on this, on the podcast with Joe. Uh, let me just say a few things because it did put it in perspective. I, I, I have been really troubled uh or or uh i don't know what the i got no chill with music okay music in trying to do music and doing music and and that whole thing 
robs me of my fucking serenity, okay? Uh, I'm not going to go off on a tangent about it, my whole, but it, I got no chill with it. it. It puts me in a mindset that is utterly anathema to like the program and all the stuff stuff I learned to give myself a bit of personal peace, the very act of doing it, even thinking about it, even dwelling upon it. It's almost like dwelling on, should I get high or shouldn't I get high? The very, it, it, it puts me in a toxic headspace. Uh, that's really all I wanted to say, but I didn't quite frame it that way. And, it, I, and I, you know, it sounded like I was being very bitter and I do have a lot of bitterness and recrimination and resentment and, you know, regret about music. But to find out that while my, I mean, to call him my brother, I always called him Brother Jack. To find out my brother Jack was passing, was dying, was losing his life while I'm bitching about that stuff, like I said, made me feel like a twat. But that's the gift that Jack gave me, okay? I, I don't know if this is the right word, but the gift that Jack gave me was humiliation, or at least humility, but sometimes it would have to take the form of humiliation, okay? When I'm entering a negative headspace, which is always two points to stop it for me, it's always like, oh, I'm in despair. One of the things, at my best, what I can do is I can be grateful for what I have. I, I will list things like, I got this, I got this, I got, I can, well, Jack, of course, introduced new things to be grateful for that some people don't consider. Like every day I would say, I can walk over there and bang my head off that wall. And it would actually, you know, that sounds like I'm being like glib or, but I'm not. Uh, you know, I can get up and go bang my head off the wall with frustration if I want. That's a gift. Jack couldn't do that. Um, even if he wanted to, and um, I would say I can go play a video game with my fucking hands. Jack couldn't do that. He introduced new things, but I've always tried to use gratitude as a way to bump myself out of a fucking negative headspace. I try to list the things. I have a girl who I love and who loves me. There's people around me who care about me. Tonight, I got a roof over my fucking head. I don't have to worry about where my next meal's coming from. Sometimes you got to get just down to the basics, but there's times where that don't work. Okay, there's times where that doesn't always work, and you got to call for shock treatment. Jack, Jack's life, his living example, his resilience in the face of what he was facing was my like like go nuclear option for shocking myself out of a toxic headspace. Because if I'd find myself you know, well, oh, I want to get high, or I can't take any more of this depression, I'm going to go jump in the river. Or particularly, oh, uh, music's getting me down, I haven't, you know, breaks my heart, I haven't been able to do any, you know, uh, I've been, what comes in my head when I think of Jack is, how fucking dare you? How fucking dare you, bitch, or pule, or whine about what you're fucking dealing with right now? Oh, you want to get high? Oh, well, Jack couldn't get high even if he wanted to. The choice isn't even there for him. He'd have to talk somebody into doing it. Oh, you want to fucking shoot yourself? Jack couldn't shoot himself and find a way out of his misery, a misery which you don't even think you could handle for five minutes, meaning me, without giving up the ghost. He can't even do that if he wanted to, and he probably does from time to time. Without, he'd have to, Jack would have to coerce somebody into doing it for him. I played in Jack's favorite band, and I'm unhappy with how things have gone. Yes, I am. That's the truth, deeply. Um, get this on a topic for another day, or a non-topic. But how fucking dare I? And to be honest, it did snap me, as always, Jack. And that's the gift he gave me. That's the gift. Humility, 
And when I need it, humiliation in the form of, I'll fucking dare you, you fucking maggot. With an M, not the other one. You worm. You can use your body. You can get up. You can go get a breath of fresh air. You can go fucking... How dare you? You know, we all have to... I'm not saying that, you know... I know pain is pain. Like, I remember somebody said to me one time. I was talking about how... um, I was at a meeting. and, And it was in rehab. And one of the people at the meeting, one of the rehab people, patients, whatever, clients, I don't know what the fuck you call them, inmates, convicts, whatever, had a panic attack and had to run out of the meeting. And the chaperone came out and said something weird like, there's people over in Afghanistan fighting for your freedom. And they are. And you know, we're all grateful for it, even though... A- and you can't just sit through a meeting for 20 minutes? I'm sitting there going, "Ah, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, yes, there are people putting their lives on the line for safety and security, and they should be honored for that. But he's having a panic attack. What's that got to do with that? They don't got nothing to do with each other. Well, the way uh, somebody framed that for me, because I reiterated it to the psychiatrist on staff, he said, yeah, that's it's like one of these deals, like, uh, is getting burned over 60% of your body one of the worst things that can happen to a person? Yes, 100%. Um, is it worse than a broken ankle? 100%, yes. He's saying, and, and yes, if you have a broken ankle, you can comfort yourself by saying, hey, at least I'm not burned. I should be grateful, not at least, but I should be grateful I'm not burned. Yes, that's logical. But you still got to fix your broken ankle. What I'm trying to say is, whatever you're dealing with, you don't have to minimize, or anybody out there, you don't have to minimize, dismiss, or um, diminish the adversities you're facing. But if you're tempted to wallow in them, if you're tempted to lie down and go, hmm, How fucking dare you? None of us would survive for five, or none of us, I can't say none of us would survive a day in in, in Jack's shoes. But I can say we would call it our worst day from everything that he told me, everything he confided in me. So when you're tempted to wallow, or at least uh, you guys do what you want, but when I'm tempted to wallow, when I'm tempted to get meh, petulant when I'm tempted to get petty and you know self-pitying I think of Jack and I say how fucking dare you that's the gift Jack gave me and it is one that has saved me from worse decisions or bad decisions time and again and I hope it will I'm certainly never going to that's not something he changed my life forever. So anybody in Jack's family or any of his friends who know or are aware of the impact Jack said I had on him. Okay. And I believe I know Jack was sincere. Just know that the impact he had on me was infinitely greater. Um, and I am grateful for that. And that's why it wasn't my loss. It's Jack's family's loss, his friend's loss. And yes, of course, he, Jack was my friend. He was my brother. But it was all it, the, the thing I've had the hardest time with is that it was Jack's loss. That guy suffered like nobody else, and there was nothing he could do about it. And he remained positive. That's, that's why he represents the best and the worst in this life. The, the, the arbitrary cruelty of what happened to Jack drives it's it like drives me to nihilism like there's no justice to this no sense to this this is just chaos i'm talking about this existence it's just chaos it's just nobody's running the show there's nothing larger going on there's only what we make of this that of course for me would lead me right to hedonism because nothing matters 
On the same time, though, how fucking dare you, motherfucker, meaning me, if he could face and keep a positive attitude, keep moving forward, doing the things he did, like like comedy and um, he had other aspirations, that's the tragedy of it. That's the loss of it. That's who really lost Jack. So many things, so many things he lost. But at the same time, his very example prevents me from giving into the impulse that his very suffering sort of steers me in the direction of which is, fuck it, this is all a mess. Like if that can happen, this is, his very example prevents me from allowing myself because how fucking dare you motherfucker look what he went through and look what he stayed firm in the face of Jack. You're the toughest human being, strongest human being. One of the most, if not the most beautiful, you're on the you're in the top ten human beings I've ever met. You changed my life. You changed my perspective. Uh, I I hope you got something out of the exchange. Um, I know you said you did, and uh, I I feel like I don't know. I I I feel like I'm 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 missing something here. I I love the guy. Uh, I hope some of this made sense. I did not know what, what I was going to say. I didn't know what I was going to say today. I know this was a disjointed one. If you don't like it, fuck yourself. Uh, this one was for me. If you did get something out of it, seriously, I'm, I'm being a wise ass, of course. Uh, you know, God bless you. And uh, he was very grateful to the team in his last message. I told you guys that. Oh, I know what just popped in my head. I, have an, I had a regret about some Jack last time I saw him. He was telling me how after he did a couple of his uh, comedy skits, uh, st stand-up routines. I just feel bad about this because it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. And he was talking about being recognized in public a few, you know, on occasions after these. He did a really big one with Bill Burr. And God, I would, not, not going to lie, Jack, you now know you're on the other side. means you can look into my heart. Yeah, it's a little jelly. You, you open for Bill Burr, you motherfucker. But um, he was telling me about a couple of times he was recognized. Like, you're that guy that opened for Bill Burr. You're that guy that did this night and that. You're fucking hilarious, man. And I was like, dude, that's awesome. And Jack said, yeah, I kind of got a sense of what it's like to be you, meaning me. He said, so this is what this is like, meaning like being recognized. And uh, I don't like that shit at all. Not Jack. He was just bond trying to bond with me. and. Um, you know, and he was feeling flattered that people recognized him, but I'm of course super cynical about that whole fucking thing. The whole, you know, oh man, you're cool because you did music or whatever. So I just said, ah, oh, man, that's awesome. You got recognized, but it's not going to pay your bills. Uh, and at the end of the day, there's, there's nothing you can do with that. I was just being cynical for my own reasons. I wasn't thinking, uh, Jack, it was, I'm glad you got recognized. Like he was just trying to enjoy it. And I'm a, I was thinking from my point of view and I just felt bad about it. I, I remember thinking, nah, you shouldn't have said that cynical shit. Keep that to yourself. If you know, because my thought was if he does that long enough, he'll learn, he'll learn. Um, I'm sorry. He didn't get a chance to do it long enough. Jack, I fucking love you. Um, I love to all of you. And, um, my love to his family. Uh, I can't think of anything else, and I'm going to jump now before this gets too long. It's already pretty long. Jesus, it's almost a fucking hour. Christ. Go team no head in the oven for real. See you later, guy.